We just arrived at an emergency. The homeowner has called in that they have a raccoon in their bathroom that has fallen through the ceiling and ended up in the, the bathroom proper. So we're gonna go and uh, see what's going on and get that guy out of there. Oh wow, there's a big hole the raccoon's using to come in. Follow me. So that's how the raccoon's getting in. Looks like the board partially broke. It's been exposed to the weather for quite some time. As you can see, the wood is gray. It's not a new hole. It's been existing um, for probably a few months now. And somehow inside, generally what we see is when they create a latrine, where they go to the washroom in the same spot over and over and over again, the drywall gets weak. They go over to use the washroom and it all comes crashing down into the room below. Uh, we'll go inside and, and see if exactly that is the case. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Okay, we're gonna come and get him. Okay. It's a terrible mess in there. Is it? Oh, it, the floor and there's a great big hole in the ceiling. Really? Okay. That's how he got in. Okay. There's a hole in the roof as well. That I, I put a piece of screen over the hole in the roof. Where is the hole? Um, on this side by the peak. Yeah, she went right through the roof. I can take a picture and show you. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. So where, where's the bathroom? I'll go in. Right here. Okay, don't open it. Okay, so this is the bathroom. So we're going to go in very slowly and, and see what's going on. It doesn't look like a very large bathroom. Oh. I don't see him yet. He has to be in. Yeah, I know. I haven't gone all the way in yet. What a mess. Look at the floor. And the hole in the ceiling. Holy cow. Okay, so we're going to come in and close the door. Just... And got himself back out. And if he was able to climb up to the hole, let's close this. Okay, now we're locked in a very small bathroom with a raccoon if it's in here. Oh, there he is. Okay, so it's right behind the toilet. curled up, waiting to be rescued, no doubt. Hi, buddy. Take a look at this phone. Let's put her nose up by the phone. Hey there. I want to take some pictures too, because it would be an awesome picture. So look at the, the ceiling here. Um, the, it looks like there's been some moisture damage on the beams themselves. So water's been coming in for a while. 
So this, this type of situation doesn't generally happen overnight. It's uh, accumulation of the drywall getting weaker and weaker and then the raccoon walking on it and it giving way uh, below the raccoon. So now we're going to try to get the raccoon to move out of its comfortable perch there and try to get the, uh, the snare around its belly. Push them back a little bit. It could be right here, actually. You know. Gently putting the, the loop over its head. Oh, it's been through this before. Come right in, Kazana. So I got it around the neck, but I want to get it under its foot. Lift your foot. And a girl. Yeah, she's a nursing mother, so we have babies. We got the snare. She's a big one. Holy moly. So I got the snare around its belly, her belly. And that gives me full control and doesn't hurt her. And uh, I can see that she is a nursing mother, so we have babies in the attic as well. Oh, she's getting there. Oh, she's flying out of you, bugger. How'd you do that? That's your big belly doing that. And your other foot. I only had one foot in there. This one's better. Okay, okay now I got both front legs in the snare. I know, I know. Do you want the door open? Uh, I'll just do this. Okay, let me just get a little tighter on it. She is large. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. I know, I know. We're gonna get you out. Okay, let's open the door and let's go. Me or no? yeah. She's big. Oh, my goodness. What a size of her. Look on the tree, Mama. Look on the tree. Okay, we're just going to release her up the tree. Okay, give me the There she goes. Let's keep her up the tree. Okay. She was heavy. <laughs> She's out of breath. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> Up yeah, we're gonna go up in the attic because she has babies up there. How do you I know? I can see that she's been feeding babies when I look at her chest. Oh. So I put her up the tree for now. We'll go up and see where the babies are. We'll take them out and we'll give them back to her on the outside. Oh. And she'll take them away. Who is she? Yeah, she'll take them away one by one tonight to another spot. She, they always have two den sites, at least two. So she has one already set up that she'll take those babies to. Okay. So we're just going to get some equipment and we're going to go up inside and see if we can find them. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. And close that door too. Okay.
usually they have their babies near the perimeter of the attic space so that's the first place we look we want to scan the whole perimeter and see if we can find where she's been laying down and, and nesting Okay, a lot has gone on since we turned the camera off <laughs> and they're now in the backyard. As you can see, um, we have had to cut two massive holes into the soffit above the aluminum, so the aluminum will go back on and, and hide those. But we had fully mobile baby raccoons, which is the first we've seen this year, and that presents all kinds of complications because it's not as easy as just going and picking them up. Um, we have to corral them. And that's why we made two holes on either side of them and then finally got to a point where we could start to grab them one by one. Um, I'd like to show you these guys. Um, here's three of the babies that uh, we corralled and, and pulled out of the soffit. And the fourth one in this bag, um, he might be screaming a little bit. He's not being hurt. He's just not happy with being held if he screams. There he is. But look at the size of these guys. They're about six weeks of age. It wouldn't be long before these babies were heading out with mother and foraging. Um, I'd give it another couple weeks and they would be making that journey because if I was to put him down, he'd, he'd be able to run away. It took a considerable amount of time to corral these little guys, but once we knew we had a nursing mother, uh, we weren't about to just lock her out and leave these babies inside. Um, we are built on our humane policies and it is um, the utmost importance to us to reunite the family when we have the opportunity to. Um, if we weren't able to get these little guys, we would have let the mother back in to continue raising them until they were big enough to come out. But fortunately, um, we were able to corner them and pull them out one by one and they will be put in one of our baby release boxes for the mother to collect tonight. two hours and a bit since we showed up in this job and we're now at the final stage of putting the babies into our release box so that the mother when she comes back tonight to um, go inside she's gonna think that the babies are still inside so she'll come back to where her original entry hole was she'll attempt to get in she'll recognize the smell and the, the babies will probably be making noise and one by one, she'll pull them out uh, of the baby box. So now for the fun part, we have babies here that are fully capable of biting and biting hard. So I um, want to take them by the scruff. There may be some screaming involved. I'll start with the one that we took out of the attic. It is in this release bag. We've already grabbed him once and he didn't scream, so he should be okay. So. Again, these are, these are big babies for this time of year. We had newborns uh, earlier this week, so these guys are way ahead of the curve, which will benefit them. So into the box it goes. Now they can climb out, so we'll keep that door closed a little bit. So, <laughs> this guy's not too happy. And he's gonna try to bite me. I know, I know, I know. I, know. I gotta get him by the scruff. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Out you come. Out you come. And into the box with your brother or sister. It must be quite an ordeal for them having never been outside to all of a sudden be confronted with this. Somebody. Oh, 
So we got a, we have a steamer. I'm not hurting him, he's just uh, calling out for mum. Hey, this guy's trying to get out already. You can see they all go into a sort of panic mode when one of them screams. Um, they figure if things aren't going well for him, they're probably not going to go well for me. And last but not least, baby number four. <laughs> so these are mini versions of mum. Fully furred, stripes on the tail. Have all the markings of a raccoon. Soon, soon they'll be climbing the, on and off a roof, breaking into garbage cans, creating havoc for some homeowner. So number four in the bin. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> You're gonna stay in there. Mom will, will be back later for you guys. <laughs> All right, so now we'll close the door and Mom will come back and she'll be able to open it and take the babies out tonight. So a rather involved job, but uh, in our humane way, we were able to solve it. Um, took some time, but uh, the homeowner doesn't have to worry about the hole in the ceiling now because um, there's no animals inside to fall back into the house so she can take her time getting someone to come in and repair the drywall and it looks like she also needs a new roof which would have maybe kept the animals out in the first place but we're done and we do have our camera set up so we'll see what footage we have of the mother coming and, and how it all played out on the roof after dark up on the mother and babies that fell through the bathroom ceiling and go up on the roof and see what's going on. So we we'll see the box. The door is wide open, which is a good sign that she came back. And the box is empty. So she came back and took all her babies last night. 